Hi kids, Mr. Polly here. So today we're going to read uh, a fiction book. And if you remember, fiction means it's made up. So this one is actually a story. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, cool. So this one is called Dinosaur Detectives. It's by Norman Bilbrough and illustrated by Greg Broadmoor. So that's interesting. It says illustrated here, but when it says by, if you remember, that means that's the author and the author is the one who writes the story and the illustrator is the one who draws and colours it. <coughs> huh, so this one has a contents page. So these are either the names of the chapters or the sections. Now because this is a story, these will be the chapters of it. And look, here are the names of all the different dinosaurs in the story. They have people names. Chapter 1. A cool job. Daniel and his friend Terry were playing Swamp Monster. This game is so slow, Daniel said. We should buy Swamp Monster too. Yeah, my friend Rex has that. It's awesome, says Terry. You'll have to pay for the new game yourself, said Daniel's mum. Here's your pocket money. Daniel's pocket money was only two dollars a week. It would take him months to save up for a new game. I need to find a job, he said. What could I do? You're good at finding things, says Terry. You found my wallet and my lunchbox. And Mary always calls you when she lost her glasses, said Daniel's mum. Daniel. Dinosaur detective, said Terry. It sounds cool. It sounded cool to Daniel too. He put up a notice at the supermarket. Look, let's read it, shall we? Have you lost your watch? Is your pet missing? I can find anything. Fee, only $10. Call Daniel at 555-1234. Chapter 2. The Missing Eggs. The next morning, the telephone rang. Is this Daniel? voice says. It's Helen Hadrosaur. I saw your notice at the supermarket. Someone has stolen my eggs. Helen Hadrosaur lived a street away from Daniel. These were her first eggs and she was very worried. I left them by the heater last night, she cried. This morning they were gone. Please will you find them for me? I'll be there in five minutes said Daniel. He took Max from the backyard and went over to Terry's house. They all raced over to see Helen. Helen was still crying when she came to the door. Please find my eggs before they get cold, she wailed. Daniel asked Helen for a pencil and paper. How many eggs are missing, Helen? he asked. How big are they? What colour are they? Here are the two eggs, she said. Look, here's a photo of them. Daniel looked at the eggs. Can I have this photo, he asked. It might help. Helen Hadrosaur nodded and gave the photo to Daniel. Chapter 3. The Footprint Terry looked around Helen's backyard. Hey, Daniel, she called. I think the thief got in over here. The bathroom window was open. Under the window, there was a footprint. It had one toe missing. They knew who that footprint belonged to. Jack Allosaur, said Terry. Max barked. He'd found some more footprints. They led over the fence into the swamp where Jack Allosaur lived. Helen Hadrosaur walked slowly back to her house. I'll never see my eggs again, she cried. Daniel was worried. I'm good at finding things. Sorry, I'm good at finding small things, he said to Terry. But Jack Allosaur is a monster. He's always stealing eggs to eat. Yes, and his claws are scary, Terry agreed. But you can run fast. And I can fly. 
Let's follow the footprints. We have to help Helen. OK, Daniel said. Let's do it. And look, here's a diagram of Jack Alisop with all of his scary body parts labelled. Look, dangerous tail, mean eyes, sharp teeth, scary claws, and a missing toe, just like in the footprints. <clears throat> Chapter 4. The House in the Swamp. They followed the footprints into the swamp. Terry carried Daniel over the boggy parts. Max sniffed and growled as they pushed through the reeds. Soon they saw a house on an island. Daniel climbed a small tree and looked through a window. What's in there? asked Terry. Daniel shivered. He could see Jack Alisor holding one of the eggs. The other egg was in a basket by the stove. Daniel was so scared that he began to shake. He shook so much that he fell out of the tree. Max growled again. Shh, boy, whispered Daniel. I'm okay. Jack Alisor was slow, but there was nothing wrong with his hearing. He came stamping out of the house. Who's there? He roared. Quick, jump on my back, Daniel, Terry called. He flew away over the swamp with Max running behind. Terry flew quickly to Daniel's house. They found Daniel's father in his workshop. They told him what had happened. Jack Allosaur is a thief, said Daniel's dad, and he's dangerous. One scratch from his claws and you're in big trouble. He couldn't catch us, dad said Daniel. He's too slow. Please, we need you to help. Can you make two fake eggs for us? Daniel knew that they had to work fast. Helen's eggs were almost ready to hatch. Daniel's dad looked worried. Okay, he said, but promise me that you'll be careful. Chapter 5. Wild Goose Chase. Early the next morning, Daniel, Terry, and Max went back to Jack Allosaurs. Daniel and Terry each carried a blanket and a fake egg. When they got to Jack's house, Daniel took Terry's egg. Remember to count to 50 and then make a lot of noise. I'll be ready, he said. Then they went to the back door and waited. Everything was quiet. Then Max barked. And Terry shouted. Jack Allosaur heard the noise. He roared and stamped about. Jack rushed in through the back door. He saw Jack running out the front door to chase Max. Helen's eggs were still by the stove. Daniel took them and put the fake eggs in the basket. Daniel found Terry hiding outside. They could hear Max barking in the swamp. He's leaving Jack on a wild goose chase. Laugh. Terry. Daniel wrapped the eggs in the blankets. We have to keep these warm, he said. When she saw the eggs, Helen cried with joy. You brought my beautiful eggs back, she said, and they're still warm. Thank you, thank you, you're my heroes. Chapter 6. A new partner. Helen was so happy she gave Daniel twenty dollars. He shared the money with Terry. You did half the work, Daniel said, so you get half the fee. As they walked home, they talked about their adventure. Jack Allisor will be waiting a long time for those eggs to hatch, grinned Daniel. He'll be waiting for years and years, Terry laughed. The next day, the phone didn't stop ringing. Every dinosaur in the neighborhood had heard about the eggs. Now they wanted to find... Sorry, now they wanted Daniel to find their shoes, their sunglasses, their toys. Daniel was very happy. He made Terry his new partner. Daniel and Terry, dinosaur detectives. They were in business. Cool. And here's some pictures of the author and illustrator. Interesting. Right. Well, that's the end of the story. Lots of cool, interesting dinosaurs in there as well, right? Now, there was one thing I did want to say about that story. In that, they use the phrase, a wild goose chase. Now, that's usually 
when someone has to run around looking for something or going on a search for something but it just ends up with nothing in the end so just like uh, Jack Allosaurus was chasing around the other dinosaur in the end of course he's not going to catch him he was doing it all for nothing hmm. so I thought that was a cool story I like stories about dinosaurs so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon bye everybody